probability involving the word or. Oh, and I gotta move the frame. Hang on, let me reframe this. Oh, it's smidge to the right. Okay, probability. Okay. Yes, addition, right? Yay. The word or gives us the operation of addition. In addition to that, the word or involves a single event. Okay, so that's the first big thing, right? Or involves a single event. involves a single event. So if I, I draw a card from a deck and it is a heart or a ten. Right? So you've only done a single event. I roll a pair of dice and the sum is even or greater than none. Right? So a single event. I've done one thing. Because the word and involves multiple events, right? You're doing more than one thing. So we're only doing one thing. Also involved with the word or. So when you see the word or, you must decide this single event. Is it mutually exclusive? And we covered that a little bit. Mutually exclusive. It's another key word that comes in here. So they could ask you a question, is it mutually exclusive? And if they give you four scenarios, one of which is correct, just remember, you should be seeing the word or, not the word and. Okay? So if you see the word and, if they're asking which of these is mutually exclusive, you see the word and, just cross it off, right? Mutually exclusive involves the word or. And mutually exclusive, again, deals with the outcome of a single event. Mutually exclusive. So the word or and mutual and the concept of mutually exclusive deal with a single event. So for example, you draw a card. Did you see the end of that game? Yeah. Like they pull the goalie, oh, they got scored on, now it's a three goalie, and then it's a, like, oh wait, and then they come back and they score two goals. That's crazy. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is over, and bam, they score. Okay, uh, so here are some examples. You draw a card. So that's a single event, right? You draw a card. Pick a card, any card. And if we want to know the probability that it's black, let's draw a card. So probability. That the card is black or a face card. So are those mutually exclusive or not? Not. not. Because there are cards which are both black and face cards, right? So if you could say, but wait, there's a card which is black and a face card, then they're not mutually exclusive, right? There are black face cards. So these are these events, this event, again, it's a single event, right? Or involves a single drawing a card. So this is not mutually exclusive. And what if it were the probability? So you draw a card again. Probability that the card is less than five or a face card. 
So now you got to ask yourself, are there any cards less than five which are also face cards? No. So then those are mutually exclusive. Okay. So this event is mutually exclusive. Now, if you say, well, what would this look like as a Venn diagram? If it is not mutually exclusive, then there's an overlapping region, right? So in this case, black card or face card, so we have the jack of spades, the queen of spades, the king of spades, jack of clubs, queen of clubs, king of clubs, right? So if this is black cards and this is face cards, and here we've got the red face cards, and here we've got the rest of the black cards. Rest of the black part. So not mutually exclusive, overlap. Okay. Because there's an end region. So we know we've got the two circles. The overlap is the end. It's a black card and a face card. And here, okay, this is less than five for a face card. And there is no overlap. What do you guys want? Yeah, we're here to turn hand out. Seriously? Like... So we've got the idea of mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive in the sense of it's going to involve the word or. It's a single event, right? So black or a face card. Less than five or a face card, right? Or, or, single event. Draw a card. And then is it this or that? Mutually <coughs> exclusive, no overlap. Right? So there's none of these that are also this. Not mutually exclusive, there is an overlap in the Venn diagram, and it can be both of these, right? There's some overlap. It can be a black card and a face card. There are black face cards. There are not cards less than five, right? Four, three, two, and you might count an ace as less than five, and a face card. No, there are none of those that are also this. So which of these is not like the other? Uh, okay, so let's say, let's do some mutually exclusive and let's do mutually exclusive. Probability of a heart or, now, here's what or looks like, right? Or is union, right? Meaning that it belongs to one or the other or both, right? The or both is the overlap. The or both is the end part of things. The or both means that it's not mutually exclusive because it belongs to both. But we're doing it mutually exclusive. So this is a heart or a spade, right? So if you draw a Venn diagram, you don't draw an overlap. If you do draw an overlap, you don't put anything in the overlap, right? So even if you draw it as intersecting circles, there would be nothing in the overlap. Because you're either a heart or a spade, and then out here are the diamonds and the clubs. Okay, and there's like 13 cards here, and 13 here, and 20. That's just numbers, right? I could put the actual little cards in there, but like I'm not drawing them. Okay, but they could put that on. And I don't think they're going to do cards. They usually don't do cards just because of consideration. Like not everybody knows a deck of cards well, you know. So. Um, Heart or spade. So if I want the probability of a heart or a spade, if I'm going to work out the probability, then I say that's equal to the probability of the card is a heart plus the probability of the card is a spade. What's the probability of a card being a heart? So we say that is how many hearts are there? Thirteen out of how many cards? So it's thirteen out of fifty-two. How many spades are there? Out of, which is, or one and a half, right? So it's always good to give these as, I call them raw probabilities, raw probabilities. How many hearts are there? How many cards are there? Don't just go one quarter, right? Like quarter of the cards are hearts. You could do that. Okay. But the problem is, you know, we got to do some adding. In this case, it is a quarter plus a quarter. But if I said like hard or face cards, and there's like 12 or 52 or face cards, and 12 out of 52 is not the same denominator, right? You can't reduce that to having a 4 on the bottom, right? 12 out of 52 is like 4 out of, I don't know what, what is 12 out of 52 reduced to? 6 out of 26, like 3 out of 13, 
Okay. So you don't want to be adding things with a denominator of 4 and a denominator of 13, right? Mm -hmm. When you're doing OR problems or these types of problems, leave the denominator in a raw form, right? Just because there will always be like 52 in the denominator. And then you can add or subtract and then reduce. Okay, so an OR probability and the formula that you will get on your formula sheet looks like this. Probability of A union B. Okay, so it's read A union B, it means A or B. Okay, so union is or. And it's just added. It's really easy, right? Because one of them has them being added and one of them has them being multiplied. And you all know that adding goes with or and multiplying goes with and. So P of A plus P of B. Now, the formula that you can kind of read into this, which you're not given, or if I just want the number in A union B, which can be read as the number in A or B, then it's N of A plus N of B. Right? What's the difference between these two? This would just be the 13 plus 13. I'm saying there's 26 cards that meet your criteria. This is probability, so it's got to be favorable over total. It's this, n of a over number of total, right? The total number of things. So that's the difference between these two formulas. But really, if you're working a problem where it's just how many, and you see, oh, hey, I can use those probability formulas, but just put a little n there for the number of. If I'm doing probabilities, then it's got to be favorable over total. Hope this semester I do a better job with this, but man, they blew it last semester. But really, worse than the province? It's pretty bad. Okay, uh, let's do the probability of black or a face card. All right, so. If they give us this problem, right, or any of these problems, we can do Venn diagrams for them, right? That's one way to sort of think about it. Like, where do things go? Is there an overlap or not, right? So is there an overlap here? Are there any black face cards? Yes. Okay. So you just, you just have to think, are there cards which are black and face cards? Yes, there are, right? Okay. So um, I could sit down. Black cards, face cards. All right, so I'm not going to draw the cards in there. We're just going to put in the numbers, right? So how many black face cards are there? Six, right? So you got the jack, queen, king of spades. You got the jack, queen, king of clubs. So there are six cards in here. How many black cards are there in total? 26. So how many go in here? So there are 20 cards. Right? Which are black cards, but not black face cards. Okay. And in the black circle, we have 20 cents. Face card circle, what goes in here? Six. The remaining six face cards. So in the face card circle, how many cards are there? Twelve, because there's 12 face cards, right? There's a jack, queen, king in each of four suits. So there are three face cards in each suit. Three times four is 12. That's how it's all distributed. Now, if I want to do the probability of black or face card, then we can start off, well, you know what, let's just do this down here. I want more room. Last page. I don't know what happened. I went to another page. Okay, so let's say we start off just the way we did before. So, so probability of black, okay, what's the probability of getting a black card? 26 out of 52. What's the probability of getting a face card? 12 out of 52. Now, what's the problem? Well, okay, if we're doing black or face, we say, well, look, there's 20, 26, there's 32 in total, right? There are 32 cards, which are either a black card or a face card. If we do it using the formula, we have 26 plus 12, which is uh, 38 cards. 
We have too many cards. What happened? We counted these guys twice, right? We counted them once inside the black circle, and then we counted them again inside the face card circle. So if we're going to do it without drawing this, right? If we draw this, we can just go 20, 26, 32, right? Probability is 32 out of 52, which is 16 out of 26, which is 8 out of 13, which is 8 out of 13. Um, you know, and, and that's what, all you need to do, right? You don't need to worry about formulas. But the formulas aren't bad, so we just say, okay. Then the problem is I counted the intersection here twice. So I'm going to have to subtract it off once. Okay. So that's a formula. This is the, the other formula you're going to get on your formula sheet is probability of A union B is P of A plus P of B minus P A intersect B. Intersect is and, right? Union is or, intersect is and. You pull that formula sheet out of the thing, you can sit down there and just circle the union and say or circle the intersection and say and, okay, if you need to, right? I mean, they give it to you here. Down at the bottom it says union and intersection here. So, you know, when you pull this out, they're going to say, go to the back, you can pull out the answer sheet and tear out the tear out pages. And at that point, if you want to say union, write down or, intersection, write down and. And then here are the four formulas, right? P of A union B. And there's two of them, right? There's the one on the previous page, P of A union B is P of A plus P of B, and then you get this guy. So you have to know. One of them is for mutually exclusive and one of them isn't. Or I'm just always going to use this formula. Because if they are mutually exclusive, then how many are in the intersection? Zero. So if they are mutually exclusive, even if I throw this onto the formula, this will be zero. So if all I ever do is use this formula, I'm not going to go wrong. Just remember that, oh, that's zero in this case, right? Oh, I could have just used the other formula, right? But, but make sure you know which formula is being used and why, right? Because the question might come out as blah, 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 and so-and-so solves this, and here's what they did. And they used this formula, and they should have used the other one. Okay, what mistake? Oh, they used the wrong formula, the events are mutually exclusive. They used the right formula, the events are non-mutually exclusive. They used the right formula, the events are mutually non No, they used the wrong formula, right? So you come up with four different uh, possible sets of answers. So here, well, the black face cards were counted here. The black face cards were counted here. So we got too many of them, so we got to subtract it off. Okay, now I don't want to list this as uh, one half plus did we say that one? Like six out of twenty-six. Three out of three, you know, one half plus three out of thirteen minus three out of twenty-six. Right? You can't do that. But we could do this, right? It's just twenty-six plus twelve is thirty-eight minus six is thirty-two. Out of fifty-two. And then that can be reduced, right? Eight out of thirteen. Or it could be expressed in the decimal. Whatever, you just go 32 divided by 52, enter, there's a decimal. Or it can be expressed as a percent, take the decimal, multiply it by 100. And then watch your rounding, right? The last thing you need to do is lose how much of your final mark in the course? What's each question on the diploma worth? Of your final mark in the course? 1.25%. 2.5% of the diploma, 1.25% of your final mark in the course. Right? Each of those questions, the last thing you need to do is lose one and a quarter percent of your final mark in the course because you rounded something incorrectly. Right. It's not, oh, it's not that I didn't know how to do it, it's just I didn't bother reading that it was rounded to the nearest tenth, so I wrote it out to the hundredth. Boom. No mark. Okay? So don't do that, right? It's like I know the stuff. I need to uh, make sure I know the stuff. All right, let's say that we roll a pair of dice. So what are the possible numbers on a die? We got one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a five, or a six. So we're going to have the red die. 
And we're going to have the green die. It's going to be a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. These have to be extended. Nice little chart, right? Now, this chart can be filled in in many different ways, but usually we deal with the sum of the two dice, right? Playing a dice game, or not, we want to know, okay, what are the, what's my probability of rolling a, a 12? Right? What's my probability of getting a 7? So in here, we're going to write the different sums. We will do in blue. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7. I've done this way too many times. But you can fill them in, right? So that's the sample space, right? That's the list of all possible. Now, in a sense, they're all possible. The, the outcomes would be one on the green die and one on the red die, one on the green die and two on the red die. But this is the sample space for all the possible sums that you can get if you roll a pair of dice. Now, sometimes they ask questions with like a four sided die because it's a lot easier to do the sample space, right? There's fewer things. Fundamental canning principle tells us that there are six outcomes for the first die and six outcomes for the second die, and six times six is 36. So in there, there are 36 outcomes, which you could also sit down and just count them for row six, or just say it's a six by six grid, so there's 36 outcomes. So what's my denominator for any probabilities? 36, right? You write something out of 36. We decide on the outcome. So, let's say it's probability of doubles or a 7. What's the probability that you get doubles or a 7? Are those mutually exclusive? Is there any way you can get doubles and have a sum of seven? Because doubles are what? One, double one, you get a two, double two is a four, or six, or eight, or ten, or twelve, right? So doubles is even, right? So here are the so here's one way we can do this, right? You can do the counting. So we just count it off the chart. All right, so let's do doubles in green, okay? Doubles, double twos, threes, fours, double fives, double six, and sevens. Here are the sevens. Anything circled in both red and green? So there is no overlap, right? These are mutually exclusive or non mutually exclusive? These are mutually exclusive, right? Mutually exclusive, they both can't happen, right? You can have doubles or a seven, you can't have both. Okay, how many ways? What's probably doubles or seven? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's 12 out of 52, which is 36. Right. Thank you. Yeah, too much cards. I do too much in the way of cards. With all that late night poker. <laughs> sign off at poker start. No, don't sign. I am over 18. Um, what's that? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I could tutor math. You could make big bucks doing that, but I don't. Uh, so probably it's 12 out of 36 or one-third that you get doubles or a seven, right? So that's just, hey, I drew out the sample space, or they gave me a sample space, right? So they might give you a sample space on the exam and ask you what's the probability. And the other way that you can do this is you can say, okay, so probabilities of double or seven is the probability. It's an or, so it's an or is plus. And then you just ask yourself, can I get doubles and a 7? And you say, no, I can't. So I don't need to put minus the probability of double and 7. So probability of doubles, 
Okay, we've got a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, a 10, or a 12. That's 6 out of 36. Probability of getting a 7. I get a 1 and a 6, or a 2 and a 5, or a 3 and a 4, or a 4 and a 3, or a 5 and a 2, or a 6 and a 1. So that's 6 out of 36. Which is 12 out of 36, or 1 third. Right? And they could also give this to you as a Venn diagram, right? Present the information in a Venn diagram. You know, uh, Bobby had to solve the problem of getting doubles or seven. He drew a Venn diagram and has the doubles and the seven. And that, you know, where's the error in this? Maybe he overlaps them and puts some number in the overlap. Right? And you say, well, there's no probability of doubles and the seven, right? What's the dice game in the casino? It's called, it's called craps. Okay. So the dice game is called craps. It uses a pair of dice. Basic rules are on your first throw, if you roll a 7 or an 11, you win. Okay. What's well, probably going to get a 7 or an 11? Okay. Well, they're mutually exclusive, right? You can't get a 7 and an 11. So there are six of these and two of those, so that's 8 out of 36. Probably winning on the first roll is 8 out of 36. If you roll a 2 or a 12, that's called craps, and you lose on the first roll. So you can win on the first roll, or you can lose on the first roll. Probably losing on the first roll is 2 out of 36. And that takes care of, what do we had? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That takes care of 10 of the 36 possibilities. The remaining 26 are a number which is not 2, not 12, not 7, not 11. That number becomes the point. So if you get an 8, then the idea is you keep rolling until you get a 7, which is then you lose, or you get an 8, which is when you win. Okay. Anyway, it's all just based on probabilities, right? And so the game, because you know the possible outcomes, the game can be examined from a point of view of a theoretical probability. So you can sit down and figure out on any given roll what's the probability of winning, what's the probability of losing. Uh, when you, if you're doing game, you start to work on things like the expected payout. How much do I expect to win if this happens? Right. All of that is based on probability or odds. Right. And that's why if you are ever planning to gamble, you need to have an understanding of probability and odds, right? Don't just walk in, you know, unless you got like 20 bucks and it's like, whatever, I'm just going to throw my 20 bucks in the slot machine where you need to have no understanding of anything. You just sit down, put the money in, pull the lever, right? There's no thinking involved there or anything. Or, you know, are there other games I'm going to play and which game is best to play, which gives me the highest chance of winning? Blackjack, if you can count cards, but then they ban you from the casino. Um, okay, given a deck of 52 cards. So when we say deck of 52 cards, we're talking the standard deck, right? 13 ranks, 4 suits, blah, 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 no jokers. 52 cards. What's the probability of black or 8? Okay, so we should be able to analyze this without resorting to a Venn diagram, right? We just say, well, we start off, everything starts off with an or, starts off as this, probability black plus probability of eight. And then the question is, are there any black eights? So then we subtract from that the probability that it's both. Then we fill in the next line. Fill in the next line. Then we work it out. Work out the line after that. Then we reduce that fraction. Reduce the fraction after that. So now you're just filling it in, right? What's the probability of getting black? What's the probability of getting an 8? <coughs> What's the probability of getting a black 8? Leaving your denominator always as 52, right? Okay. Okay, so this part just becomes a counting problem. It's almost like probably a counting problem, right? Counting. Remember, these three units are so tied together. Set theory, 
What is the set of all possible outcomes, right? Well, you got these 13 cards for their 52 outcomes. Um, counting, counting methods, is permutation or combination? Not, not so much in here, right? We're just counting, we're counting cards. Okay. Or, what other way can you do this? You could draw a Venn diagram. Say, so, all right, you got black cards, I got eight cards, I got 26. Wait a minute, how many black eight? You got to start. Remember, we always start with the intersection, right? There are two black cards, which are eights. There are 26 black cards in total, so there's 24 of those, and there are four eights in total. What's the probability? 24, 26, 28. 28 out of 52, right? So you get to this number, drawing a Venn diagram, or using the formula. So it's your choice, right? It's your choice how you do this. If we're doing an or on this, you just add up everything, right? This plus this plus this. If you're doing an or here, which is, I, to me, this is easier. Okay. But you have to decide what's easier for me, right? Do I want to draw a Venn diagram and then just count them all up, or do I want to use the formula, which is on my formula sheet? All right, that becomes up to you. Expected values. Expected values. Okay, so if you're looking for expected values, now this was just working out the, that was the, the calculus area. There's, there's online stuff that does that for you, right? This is a wolframalpha.com widget on uh, working out the area. But that's not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this. So expected values, three, 308.com. So a Canadian political website, right? Did some polling for the Alberta election. So this is Alberta vote projection, right? So they're saying for the NDP, the minimum amount of popular vote we expect is 36.9%, the maximum of 51.6%, and we are projecting 44.5%. These are the actual results down here, 40.6. If they get a vote of 44.5, that is going to translate. We expect them to get 55 seats. They actually got this many, right? And those of you that think your vote doesn't count, the riding in which we are presently residing is Calgary Glenmore, was tied. So there will be a recount. They're going to go through all the ballots again and see if it's still tied. And if it is, then they will hold a by-election. They will say, let's try again. So every single vote counted, right? I mean, if one person had not voted, or one person had voted, right? Like there's one person out there who was going to vote and didn't. They would have made the, you know, they would have decided the election. That one person who was going to vote would said, ah, my vote never counts and this always happens. Yeah, you could have been the deciding vote, any one of them. Okay. I think after the recount, they'll find that there were some spoiled ballots that were counted or there were some ballots that weren't spoiled, that weren't counted, whatever. But anyways, this, the idea here is <clears throat> we have Percentage, these are probabilities, and the probabilities lead to an expected value, right? So why do they do all this polling? Well, they're trying to figure out how many people, what percent of the people are going to vote, and how is that going to translate into seats? See, Wild Rose, they said 25, they actually got 21. PC Alberta, they said 6, they actually got 10 to 11. They actually were off on the popular vote. Here's 23.7, worked out to 27.8. You'll notice that the PCs took a higher percentage of the popular vote than the Wild Rose, yet ended up with 10 or 11 fewer seats. This is due to our cross-curricular stuff. It's due to our political system, which is first past the post, right? In any given riding. So it doesn't matter how many votes you win a riding by. Like, really, Calgary Glenmore, where after a recount, it could be a one-vote difference. You can win by one vote. You can win by 10,000 votes. doesn't matter. You still become the winner. It's just first past the post. Whoever gets more votes than the other person. As opposed to like proportional representation would say that means that 40.6% of the, the house would be NDP, 24% here, 28% these guys, and 4.2% other. Okay. Anyways, so that's just kind of an idea leading into the concept of expected value. Right? Like what do we expect? And here was the well, redemption for the pollsters, right? If you remember the 2012 election, the polling was absolutely, totally off. 
OK, so expected values, how does that work? If we have n items, and we have a probability of p Okay, so they're saying we have so many voters, those are the items. And the probability, the percent of people that vote for this is this, means this number of voters will vote for this party, right? That's the idea behind expected value. So let's say there are 400 graduating students. among whom you may rank yourselves, right? Graduating students. The probability of forgetting their grad gown, the probability, which, by the way, if you do that, you will not walk across the stage. Right? You must have a grad gown. Probability of forgetting their grad gown. So the idea is get there early enough that you could go back home and then come back down again, right? So that if you get there or you're halfway there and it's like, ah, oh, forgot the gown. Turn around. We gotta head home. So leave early enough. The other reason for getting there early is because you can meet up with your friends and take lots of pictures outside where it's hopefully not raining. Right? And it's down at the corral this year, so you just think about stamping outside the corral. And there are there's the statues and stuff, so you can do a lot of pictures in front of the statues, in front of the ag building and stuff like that. You can pose on the stairs, there's the odd bit of greenery and trees, maybe somewhere on the park, right? Um, if you're planning on going back, you can buy a parking pass that gets you in and out and back in again for like 20 bucks instead of 15 each time. So if you are planning on driving and parking there, it costs you 15 bucks to get in, but if you want to go back in, just tell them we're coming back later and they'll give you a, a re-entry pass, and that only costs you 20 bucks. Anyways, probability of forgetting their grand gown is 0.1%. So the question is, how many will forget their game? So do, to do an expected value, right, like how many of these, we just say I've got 400. And the probability is 0.01. Actually, it's 0.001, right? We've got to change a percent into a probability, right? 0.1% is 0.1 out of 100, so that's 0.001. So you cannot work with a probability as a percentage. It must always be a decimal or a fraction. So you take 0.1 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.001. Then you go times 400, and you get 0.4. So 0.4 students will forget their GAN, which means over three years, likely one student. Okay. Mostly you have parents who are coming in who will say, do you have your GAN? Yes, they do. Okay. Or you'll make sure you have it, right? Um, and you'll get it at the grad rehearsal, which is in a couple of weeks. I think it's this period. We're going to miss a math? Oh, horrible. Yeah, we'll never finish, except we're almost finished, so we'll, you'll be okay. This is about like the best class if you're going to miss anything. It's not, not a big deal, right? So uh, the grad rehearsal will be like on a Thursday, probably, last period. What day is it? 21st, which is probably a Thursday. What's today? The 8th, the 7th, the 21st. So you can just wander in any time, and you know, as long as your name hasn't gone up. Of course, if it's done alphabetically, then you're fine. Wander in two hours late. It doesn't matter. You'll still be on time if you're, if you're early. No, that's, that's not actually true. <laughs> okay, so we expect the expected value is 0.4, right? which means likely not going to happen, but every couple of years, you know, it, it may happen. So that's probability involving the use of the word or, which means that they are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive, right? Or involves that. Um, 
Next week, we'll continue with and, which involves more than one event. Right? you got to do this and you got to do that. Right? This is you've done something and the result is this or that. 